Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm out here to help a couple of guys that have been working in the heat all day with trying to get a baseball field to drain better. It's a small town, the way a lot of things work, there's no budget for this. It's gotta be just done the hard way or with volunteers. Right now they're cutting sod off each side and the base path is higher in one spot and there's a lip on this side, it all needs cut off. So I'm gonna help them get some sod off right now and tomorrow I'm going to bring the skid loader out here and transit level and we're gonna try to grade these base paths around the back side and just do whatever we can to make all this have the correct slope and be more playable. You see right here they've rented a sod cutter and they've cut strips about a foot wide and then they're rolling that up and setting it next to it because once this is graded out we've got to get it put back. So if you've ever cut sod and rolled it and moved it before you already know that these rolls even though they're fairly small are really heavy and they're hard to deal with. This is not perfect turf so it tries to fall apart so we saved as much of it as we can and it would obviously be a lot easier to do all of our grading and then buy new sod but like I said this is a volunteer project trying to improve this high school baseball field so there's no budget for buying sod the only expense that I'm aware of is renting the sod cutter. Everything else is done with donated machines and volunteer labor. Did have dirt base paths. When it's done, the plan is to pull sod next to the dugouts over and have a uh, full grass base paths. It's not real baseball like that, but some guys like it. So on day one, most of the sod got removed and everything was marked. Now you're seeing us on day two. We managed to get a total of five people here to work. And we've got my skid loader with the power rake. And someone else donated the use of a Kubota SLV 75. And all five people here are comfortable running a machine. So having two really made us more productive. As you can see, step one was just removing excess material from where the base paths used to be with the John Deere skid loader. And we piled this on the infield so that we could raise the level of the entire infield a little bit. At the same time, the Kubota skid loader was pulling sod off the backside of the infield. And this had already been cut with the sod cutter, but this was not turf that we wanted to reuse. Earlier I said that most of the sod had been removed and the back side of the infield is the last place we really still had to pull turf. So that's what you see us doing now. And if you caught that spray of water a second ago, that is because this sod cutter will not cut unless you spray it down first. So everywhere that we removed sod, the next step was to lower the ground level beneath it 
and we used a grade rod constantly throughout the day to try to make sure that we're sloping everything away from the pitcher's mound and out towards the dugout because rainouts are no fun. So none of us have done this exact job before, so there was a little bit of trial and error. Seems like the best thing for us was to power rake it and then remove the material with the bucket. Because this is hard packed clay that's been here for years and pretty hard to just grade it with the bucket alone. So loosening all this material made it nice and smooth to come down through here and remove material. So here's an example of that routine I was just talking about where the Harley rake is going around the back side of the infield and you're about to see the Kubota come down the third base baseline and this gave us a pretty good routine that we could repeat over and over until we were perfectly graded. And if you're watching this thinking I said we had no budget but we've got these two machines out here, in terms of the budget for a baseball field, you could still rent these machines if you had to at an affordable cost especially if you're just renting one machine for a couple days. Because I can tell you from personal experience that I maintained a baseball field for a few years with no budget for that field. And in that case, we did everything with hand rakes or we might have a flat drag with a lawnmower or something like that. But we never really were able to fix some of these types of issues and looking back on it, I wish I had spent a couple hundred dollars and rented a machine and fixed the base paths. Even if that was all done out of pocket, which is often the case on these types of fields. Now we still have a few steps before we're ready to put the sod back, but as you can see, it's starting to smooth out nicely. So obviously I'm not going to show all of this grading. What I can say is it really requires a lot of patience. So you just remove small amounts and check it with the transit level and just continue removing a little bit at a time until you get the slope in both directions the way you want it. What we're looking for here is most of the base path to be flat and once you get to the edge, we want it to start tapering down a little bit for water runoff. And we repeat this process over and over all the way around the infield. Basically the same process that we used on the baselines applied to the home plate area as well.
This project is not to level the entire field, but after we did the base pass, we also looked at some other problem areas. And that included lowering this big hump in front of the pitcher's mound. We only removed about four inches of material here, and we really had to be careful because if we took it down too much, it would be lower than some other surrounding areas. So at this point, we've got basically all of the excess material removed, and anything that's suitable to be used in the infield has been piled in the infield. So now we're going through and spreading that out and trying to get everything level because this infield has a lot of grass in it. At one point here you'll see we have four machines running because both skid loaders are spreading dirt on the infield and we're also watching for any grass clumps and trying to pick those out and get them outside the fence. But we also have a big roller that is packing down the base paths and we're running a three-wheeler with a drag behind it to smooth out the base paths after the roller's done and loosen the material back up. I felt like at this point we were really accomplishing a lot in a short period of time. The real struggle on this job starts when it's time to put the sod back down. So most of what we've shown to this point was dirt work and half of that or half of us were in air conditioned cabs so not too bad and we tried to get out here early in the morning to beat the heat but that time's passed now and it's about one in the afternoon when we started laying down the sod and the actual temperature was 99 and the heat index was well over a hundred. So we were taking frequent breaks and right here you'll see we were really smart to carry the sod from wherever it was setting all the way down to where we were laying it before someone had the genius idea to actually use the skid loader to move all the sod closer. Now I made a joke earlier about real baseball fields having dirt base paths and that's my preference but if you're one guy who maintains an entire field by yourself, you start to like a grass base path in a hurry because the maintenance is so much easier. After a little while we decided to take a break from laying sod and one of the guys used the big roller to compress everything that had been spread on the infield and then I followed that back up with the power rake to try to smooth it back out and leave that nice loose top layer that you need. A nice side benefit is that the power rake pushes any grass that's in it all into a pile at the end of your runs and kind of serves two functions at once. So once all the stalling was done, we got back to laying the sod. And we already knew that we weren't gonna have enough sod to finish this. And the initial plan was to take some sod from around the fence lines and kind of borrow it to bring over here and just allow that grass to grow back in over time. But that's just doubling the work. So around this time, we started calling to see what our options were 
for buying just enough sod to finish this. After we got this bucket full of sod put down, Coach asked me if I thought I could kind of put in a warning track by removing all the grass with the Harley rake. And I thought that sounded like fun, so that's where I headed next. As I was doing this, I started to think that a better tool for this job would have been to put a tiller on the tractor. And at the other field I used to work, I actually maintained that one by tilling it occasionally, and then I would drag it. But after I was done, I realized that the Harley rake just dethatched everything and broke it loose and made it really easy to come back through with the bucket and scrape up the loose grass. And I think they're going to have a pretty nice warning track for the amount of work that I put into it. Now you're seeing our end of day progress for the base paths. I think these grassed over base paths are going to be really nice. And we had enough sod to do almost all of the third base side and almost half of the first base side. I think they're buying one pallet of sod to put down. So they still have that to finish and they have to rework the pitcher's mound. But I feel good having come and helped for a day even if we didn't get everything done. The Harley rake did a great job of ripping all the grass up here. And the only problem is this is a long strip and by the time it got to the end it was windrowing all these, this sod, all this grass out each side. So I brought the bucket back through after I turned the camera off and I just scooped up all that loose grass. And there's still a little bit by the fence but my skid loader was beeping that it was out of fuel so I went ahead and put it on the trailer and they're going to finish the cleaning this up tomorrow with the Kubota. And then they've got maybe 30% of the sod left to put down and we ran out of sod. So they will be going and picking up a pallet of sod tomorrow to finish it off. But I really think we've made a ton of improvement here. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos and I'll see you next time.